Hey, what's up guys? Today we are going to talk about uh, basic oscilloscope use and uh, this is just a very basic primer for folks who have little to no experience. Yeah, I know I'm going to be leaving out a lot of stuff here so bear with me. Alright, the first thing we're going to talk about are the two axes. We have the x-axis which is time and we have the y-axis which is volts. So what the oscilloscope shows us is volts over time. And one of the simplest things that we can measure is just a plain DC voltage. So if we turn on channel 1 here, we can see right here this is our zero point that we've set. So this line here is zero volts. Now I'm going to add some power here and you can see that we have moved up. Now if you look over here this is our vertical control for channel 1 and you see we are showing 2 volts per division. These are our divisions. These are called major divisions and these little ones here are called minor divisions. So we know each division is 2 volts. So if we look here and count up 2, 4, we see that we are measuring 4 volts. And if I shut the power off, the voltage goes back down to 0. Pretty simple. Now, this control here allows us to adjust the divisions. So we rotate it clockwise, basically we zoom in, counterclockwise, we zoom out. So now you see that we are looking at 5 volts per division. So this line here is now 5 volts, and if we count 1, 2, 3, Four. We're at just a hair over 4 volts. Pretty simple, right? Alright, what we're looking at now is a sine wave. And you can see here that we are at 200 millivolts per division. Now we can zoom in like I said before by rotating this clockwise there's a hundred millivolts per division and we can also do the same thing up here which is our horizontal or time based control so you see here each division is 500 microseconds so there's 500 microseconds a thousand 1500. So if we adjust that, you can see how it's showing us more of the waveform on the screen. So there we are at a thousand milliseconds per division, or one millisecond per division. So what we have is one, two, three, four. 5 milliseconds. Now we have our voltage in our y-axis versus our uh, time in the x-axis. So by using these two things we can get a lot of different measurements. Now most modern scopes allow you to do that by having controls to measure these things. So for instance, we can look here at the frequency and you can see it is 1.025 kilohertz. There are lots of other measurements we can take too. We can observe the period, rise time, fall time, all this sort of thing. So these are pretty useful things and they allow us to look inside the electrical circuits that we are working on. 
Now sometimes you can't get a good stable waveform like this. And the reason for that is it's not triggering. See how the waveform is moving? So what we need to do is we need to adjust our trigger level so that it is within the waveform. And what that is telling the scope to do now is to measure, start measuring, whenever something crosses that line. And that's how the trigger works and that's how we get a good solid waveform. So as long as the trigger is somewhere within the range of what we're measuring, we get a nice solid waveform. Okay, what we're looking at now are two waveforms. We have channel one which is this square wave here and channel 2 which is our sine wave. So we're able to view two waveforms at the same time and then by using our zero position controls we can superimpose them and what you can what you're seeing here is that even though these two waveforms have a different amplitude, that's our voltage, they have the same frequency. You can see the waves are starting at the same point. And this becomes really useful when we're diagnosing problems in circuits. I mean, here we have a nice sine wave and a nice square wave. But what happens when we look at something that's not working correctly? If you're expecting a sine wave and you get a waveform like this, well, then you know that something is going very, very wrong. So the last thing we're going to talk about is our different trigger modes. Now this scope, which is the uh, Handtech 6022 BE USB scope, only triggers on edge, but we have our trigger sweep, which we have auto, which it means it continually sweeps the signal, normal and single, which takes one picture and then stops. Our trigger source, which channel, and our scope whether we're triggering on the rising or falling edge. So guys, this has been a quick and dirty introduction to using an oscilloscope. I hope you liked it. If you Give me a big thumbs up if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I will catch you next time.